good morning and happy Mother's Day to all of you ladies that have nurtured children, uh, those that bore them, those that raised them, uh, those that uh, care for them on a daily basis. We thank you for all that you have put into the children of this earth and uh, that which you've invested of yourself into others. We give you thanks and give God praise. Today, our text takes place at a dinner table setting, oddly enough, and Jesus has been explaining that he must go away. As he does, he obviously sees the distraught faces and shoulders drooping. So he takes some time to encourage them and explain what is ahead of them. And Jesus does not give them deep theological explanations of all they will of all that will happen to them as they go into Jerusalem, but he, he does give them encouragement that I'd like to share with you. The text is out of John's Gospel, chapter 14, begins at verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And I want to stop there so we don't miss this truth. Jesus said that they should not have troubled hearts regarding his departure. And I would suggest a troubled heart is not what Jesus wants us to have at any time. It is not to say that you will never experience things that uh, cause you a heavy heart, but it is to say that it's not what Jesus wants for your life. And Jesus gives us a remedy for a troubled heart. It's trusting in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Troubled hearts are at their very core, a lack of trust in the divine providence of God. And to get past that, we need to be reminded of the provisions of God to strengthen our faith and rebuild our trust of God. We'll come back to that in just a little bit. Reading on in verse 2, In my Father's house are many mansions, or many rooms, depending on your translation. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place I am going. Jesus wants everyone with a heavy heart to remember that he is preparing a place for you to reside. And it is Jesus that will come back to collect you at the proper time. Now, I know that many people think that an angel will come for them, but I, I've never understood why, frankly. Uh, the reason I believe Jesus is coming to get me himself is because he said he would. And when my time comes, do not wonder about my spirit and do not mourn for me. Mourn for those who have been lost and do not know Christ. But when I go, rejoice, please. Rejoice for me, for I will have entered into my Father's house and will be singing with the angels about the love and the glory of God. So what is it we must trust God for so that our hearts are no longer troubled? Well, we must trust God for the joy that is to come when his body and this world shall be no more. We trust God. Uh, we trust that God will give us a happiness that will last as long as the immortal soul shall last. And this is a sovereign thought that should permeate any and all troubles we might be experiencing in this present age. We trade the depressing thoughts this world gives us, and we see them through the eyes of God's love. And we see, when we do, we receive joy from the Lord. Now, when we do that which brings God joy, we are then strengthened by God. For 2,000 years, the saints have encouraged themselves with this truth that eternity with God in heaven would make all of life's troubles worth it. Why will it be worth it? Well, Jesus says, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. In God's heaven, there are many mansions, large estates, if you will, no poverty and no one in need of anything. God provides all our needs and in fact is our light. Think about all the trouble you have lived through, the troubles of everyone you have ever known and realize that the awful parts of life will pale in comparison to the magnificence and the presence of the glory of God. It's easier said than done, I get that. But you and I have this confidence in our future glory. If it were not so, Jesus would have told us, he says. Jesus once told these men to give up their livelihood, follow him, and he would make them fishers of men. And Jesus is telling them that he is living, or rather leaving them now, and they are all wondering what will become of them. What will they do for a living? How will they go on? Jesus could have told them they needed to go back to their previous places of employment so that they could survive, but tells them it will be worth it all if they remain as fishers of men. That's what keeps me going day in and day out. The knowledge that there is a mansion just over the hilltop, as the song says. 
in all honesty, I, I don't need a mansion. I don't really care about a mansion. I just want to be in the presence of God. I'd, I'd be happy just to be a doorkeeper in heaven as long as I can look on the presence of God and sing his praise with all the company of heaven. What a joyous time that will be. When my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. Beautiful song lyrics and beautiful meaning. There may be some of you watching today that feel a bit like Thomas uh, in verse 5. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Thomas didn't know that Jesus was going to become the way to heaven. And how could he? Jesus hadn't died yet, rose again. Jesus was only now trying to explain the redemptive work of the cross that was still ahead of him. Jesus tells Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Verse 7, if you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing this work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Now, after Jesus told them the joy that would be ahead for the faithful. Thomas asked how they were to get where Jesus was going. Very valid question when discussing the desire to see someone that says they're going away, don't you think? Do I go east, west, north, south? How far do I go? I, I don't think Thomas understood that Jesus was speaking about the spiritual realm. If Thomas had known Jesus was speaking of a spiritual place and not a physical, he, he probably wouldn't have asked this question. Jesus tells his followers emphatically that he personally is the way to heaven. By living a sinless life and by dying for our sins, Jesus became the way for us to enter into heaven. By his very life, Jesus taught all believers their purpose, which is to serve those God loves and to serve them sacrificially and to make disciples of all men and women. Jesus is the way and also proclaims that he is the truth. There will always be opposition to truth, and every believer needs to be aware of this up front. We must also remember that the scriptures, the very word of God, that the eternal truths and modern concepts are, is the place that they can be found. Jesus is called the living word of God, and as such is the very embodiment of truth. Jesus is the substance of all of the Old and the New Testament, the living word, if you will. Jesus is the true manna from heaven and the true tabernacle. And when we seek truth, we need to be begin and end in Jesus. Jesus is true to all that trust in him and as true as truth itself. Jesus also claimed that he is the life, for we are alive unto God only in and through Jesus Christ. For all who will receive him, Jesus sets up the kingdom of God in our hearts. Our bodies might be deteriorating, but our souls have been glorified and are destined for eternity. That said, Jesus is the life and has set up his eternal kingdom in us. Christ has shown he is the life by the power of his resurrection, and no more proof is needed. In fact, Scripture tells us that after the resurrection, Jesus showed himself to over 500 witnesses. When we put the fact that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life together, we, we know that Jesus is clearly the beginning, the middle, and the end of all things. In Christ we live and move, and we have our eternal being, and he is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, and the end. There's no other name under heaven by which men might be saved. Jesus was there at the creation of the world and will be around long after this world is gone. Why did Jesus say that no man comes to the Father but through me? 
because we fallen creatures must one day come before God the Father and face him first as a judge. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, when we come to God the Father as sinners to be judged, we need the advocate Jesus, the Christ, to go with us. As our advocate, Jesus has paid the price for our sins and made a way for us to come to the judge of humanity in peace. Jesus is the high priest that has made a way for us to be at peace with the Father now and forevermore. There are a lot of people that have a view of God as a great punisher, someone in heaven just waiting to swipe you into hell, with maybe with a great backhand, I don't know. But Jesus tells Philip, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Do you want to know what God is like? Then read the Gospels. If you can see the actions of Christ and read the words of Christ, you know the Father and his love for you. Jesus came to seek and save the lost, and the Father has empower anyone willing to do the same. Jesus states that he has been with these men for enough time for them to really get to know him, and the longer you you truly walk with Christ, the more you learn to trust him. When I say walk with Christ, I, I don't mean just listening to Christian music or going to church once a week. When I say walk with Christ, I, I mean like the disciples. One spends quality time reading daily the words of Jesus, the, the Christ, and spending time in the very presence of God. The more time we spend in the presence of God, the fewer excuses we can make for doubting God's provision or for having a pity party. Jesus tells the disciples something today's church needs to hear. Jesus told them in Matthew 10, 8, that they would do even greater things than he did himself. Consider that Christ raised the dead, he healed the sick, and cleansed the leper, and told the church that we would do greater things than this. Consider that Jesus convinced unbelievers to believe in God and drew multitudes to hear his words, and Jesus told us that we would do greater things. His words and works should be carried on as vigorously as ever before, and greater things should be expected. There are no small miracles, only small minds that try to explain away God's miracles and his provisions at the point of our need. Jesus healed with a word or a touch from the hem of his garment. It was known that Peter walked by his, and, and his very shadow on something would bring them healing on people. Paul would pray over a cloth, and the anointing on it would heal those that touched the cloth. The prayer of faith makes every difference. When you pray, do you believe you will do greater things than Christ? Jesus left the disciples to do this because he was going back to the Father. He stated he would send back the Comforter, from whom you shall receive power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 tells us that. What the church has done when walking in the power of God has been nothing short of miraculous. Jesus said, whatever you ask, that I will do. If you believe that, you have seen the power of God in action. If you do not believe it, you have not yet believed in the miracle power of God. Jesus was going away for a time, but wanted to encourage the disciples. They would still stay in communion with him through the work of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, that he was going to send back. We know that Pentecost was the original outpouring of the Blessed Holy Spirit, and we understand that event even better now. What we may not understand in our current state is the success we should be having in our prayer lives. Jesus said, I will do whatever you ask in my name. So I wonder, are you seeing results in your prayer time? You should be, if you are praying and believing. If you are not praying, you should be praying. Even if you don't believe, pray till you do. We should be seeing answers to prayer day in and day out. Jesus didn't say that we could manipulate him or control him, but that he would willingly be answering our prayers. Since he now sits at the right hand of God the Father, we have confidence that our prayers will be answered if we ask in his name. This is why believers ask and why they ask in Jesus' name, because he told us to do so. So today I want you to know, I want you to ask the question, what is it you need from God? What is it?
Is it courage? Is it a miracle? Is it food? Is it water? Is it clothing? Is it transportation, housing, relationships? What is it you need from God? Some of you need to learn to trust him. Some of you need to start praying so that you, you can learn of his faithfulness and ask him for things that transform the lives of others. I remember one of the first times I learned to trust God to answer prayer. I was trying to determine if I should quit my job and go to college to study scripture. I remember really pouring myself out to God after a, uh, an evening worship service. And I was at an altar and I was pouring myself out to God that I would do whatever he wanted me to do, go where he wanted me to go, say what he wanted me to say. If only I could know what that was. So I made a flee, something I don't believe mature believers should do. But God still met me in my ignorance. I asked God to speak to me or give me some kind of sign. And I wasn't hearing anything, so I asked for a sign. I don't advise you to do this, but for immature believers, God does, does interesting things. I asked God to give me some kind of sign if he wanted me to leave my job and start down the path towards ministry. So I said, God, if you want me to move, take my car from my house. It doesn't run now anyway. And when I get home, if the car's gone, I will know you want me to move. And I will do so. I arrived home exactly a half hour later. My car was gone. It had been sitting there for a couple months, and suddenly it was gone. Now, I later found out it had been towed. But that's beside the point. I gave my notice the following week, a month's notice at my office, my work. Enrolled in Bible College in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and the rest is, well, it's history. I learned that one should be careful what they ask for and learn to trust God exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or think. What is it that your friends, your family, or your neighbors need? Maybe you know someone that needs to know God. What are the needs that you should be praying for today? What are the needs that we can all be praying for? Let us together pray that God give humanity the antibodies necessary to fight off this virus. Let us also ask God for the boldness to proclaim his truth until Jesus returns in spite of the opposition. We were created for just such a time as this and God has given us everything we need to be successful in his ministry. So let us go from here today trusting God and asking him to do great things in Jesus Christ. And let's ask him in Jesus' name. Will you do that? Maybe you need to write those prayer requests down. Some of you are forgetful. I know I am. A prayer journal is a wonderful thing. Write it down. Date it. You might even be surprised. That God would call you to prayer for something you don't even understand, an old friend at a certain time. You don't know how many times I've heard of people praying for an old friend they knew at just the time they needed it. So I call you to prayer. For if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, says the Lord, then will I turn from my judgment and heal their land. We need a healing. Let's be about the business of prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to approach the throne of grace. Lord, I just pray for everyone in the hearing of my voice through this video that your anointing would fall from heaven and that you touch them from the top of their head to the bottoms of their feet. Pour out your Holy Spirit within them. Bring healing to them. Body, mind, soul, and spirit. Heal their being. And whatever healing they need. And for those who are weak in body or mind or soul, strengthen them, encourage them, equip them, empower them. Give them eyes to see and ears to hear. The blessed Holy Spirit. Raise up your church. It is times like this that we need to see the miraculous. Now do your good, pleasing, and perfect will in us, to us, and through us. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray and we trust and believe. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Pray you have a blessed day. Uh, mothers, I pray that you uh, 
get this chance to talk with your children and uh, pray they love on you a whole lot. You deserve it. May God be with you until we meet again.